Welcome to this video about using Axi multi-channel DMA under Linux for Zinc and Zinc Ultra Scale devices. This practical educational package contains three parts. In the first part, we talk about using Axi DMA for transferring the streams. In the second part, we talk about using Axi multi-channel DMA for transferring streams from the PL to the PS. And in the third part, we talk about using Axi multi-channel DMA for transferring data from the PS to the PL. Imagine you want to transfer multiple parallel streams from the PL to the PS. So here we have a sketch of the very basic idea. We have multiple incoming streams. The data streams arrive at Axi DMA modules. The Axi DMA modules start copying these data into the DRAM memory. So in the DRAM memory, we would have basically buffers for each of these streams. Each of these buffers will be managed by an instance of the driver for Axi DMA. So we will have three instances of the driver for Axi DMA running in our Linux kernel, and each of them is responsible for handling one of these Axi DMAs. Now, another solution would be to use only one Axi DMA instead of the tree. Why would one like to do that? There are several reasons. The first one, simplest, is you can say, I want to have a smaller area. One other may say, I want to have a better management on the storage of streams in the DRAM memory. I want the streams to appear or to, co to be copied to the DRAM memory with a specific order. In our simple solution, we will have a module between the Axi stream sources and the DMA. We will call this module the scheduler. The scheduler is responsible for receiving these streams and scheduling them one after another to the Axi DMA so that the Axi DMA copy the data into DRAM memory. In this design, we will have only one instance of Axi DMA in our hardware and one driver instance of the Axi DMA will be running inside the Linux kernel. If I look at the same design in more detail, I can see how this entire system can operate. The multi-channel DMA scheduler can have an interrupt line to the CPU. Also, it can have an Axi slave plug. The DMA engine can be configured in register mode. It can have an interrupt line to the CPU and also it has an Axi slave plug through which you control, configure the registers of Axi DMA. The multi-channel DMA scheduler contains FIFO for each of the incoming streams. Whenever a FIFO has enough data to be transferred over the DMA, the scheduler produces an interrupt to the CPU. The CPU will then access a register inside the scheduler. The register will inform the CPU which of these streams is the one who has data ready to be transferred. So it configures the DMA with correct lengths and correct destination address in the memory so that the transfer starts happening. For example, if stream 0 has enough data in the FIFO to be transferred, then the software running on the CPU will configure the Axi DMA and as the destination address for the DMA operation, it will give him a location inside the stream 0 buffer. The multi-channel DMA scheduler that we have here has FIFOs for each of the streams all of the streams can run in parallel. And then it looks at the FIFOs one after another. It checks the first FIFO, checks if there's enough data, produces the interrupt, prepares to send the content of the FIFO on the output, and waits for the DMA to start the operation. After the transfer of data is done, it goes ahead, checks the FIFO for the next stream. If again there is enough data, produces the interrupt, puts the number for this stream on the register here and waits for the transfer to be done. And it continues doing this 
over and over again. Here is the Vivado design that we have created for realizing this idea. In our Vivado design, we have three Axi stream counters. The counters are basically our Axi stream data sources. Each of them is operating at a different clock and is producing data with a different rate. These guys can be controlled by the CPU, can be enabled or disabled by the CPU. Our Axi stream sources are connected to our MCDMA scheduler module. That's the module that I described the operation to you here. Axi stream master port of MCDMA scheduler is connected to Axi DMA. Here in our example, we are using a PSI DRAM memory to store the data. The exact same idea can be applied for storing data in the PL side DRAM memory. Our DMA has also an interrupt line to the CPU. Whenever a transfer task gets finished, the, in the DMA interrupts the CPU to indicate that this transfer task is done. Here I am showing the sequence of operations in more detail. We have our XI stream sources. They are sending data to our scheduler. The scheduler contains asynchronous FIFOs for each of the streams. This is the responsibility of the developer to make sure that he has enough bandwidth for transferring data here so that it can reliably transfer the streams at the same time. We create the software that we need under Linux to make our system fully operational. Our software contains two parts, the user level application and then the kernel level drivers. The user level application plays the role of a kind of coordinator between the drivers. We have three drivers related to our hardware. First one is the Axi DMA driver. This is the driver that we write to control and configure the Axi DMA to receive the interrupts from Axi DMA to perform required memory allocations and to run the DMA transfers. The next one is the driver that we write for our multi-channel scheduler. This is the driver responsible for configuring, handling the interrupt, and receiving data, reading data from the scheduler. And then the third one is a simple driver that we write for our Axi stream counter. The user level application can talk to each of these drivers through I.O. controls. Also, the buffers that our Axi DMA driver allocates in the memory for storing the data coming from streams will be accessible by the user level application through a map. Now let's have a look at a, a slightly more complicated design. We go to our next solution. Instead of normal Axi DMA block, in this design we use an Axi multi-channel DMA. The Axi multi-channel DMA that we use in the design uses a scatter gather mode for figuring out which transfer should be done for each of the streams. Here is a simplified block diagram of our design. Instead of Axi DMA, we have an Axi multi-channel DMA. It's actually very similar to the Axi DMA with some slight differences. First of all, the Axi multi-channel DMA contains an Axi master port through which it can read the descriptors from the DRAM memory. The descriptors are basically the pieces of data that define for the DMA the transfer task that it should do each time. So whenever, for example, the multi-channel scheduler sees there is enough data to be transferred for one of the streams, it informs the DMA about the availability of the stream and also the destination to which the stream can be stored in the DRAM memory. As soon as these data are provided to the DMA, the DMA can fetch the descriptors defining 
the DMA transfers related to that specific stream. And then it can start reading the stream data and copying the data to the specific buffer for that stream. See, the difference with our previous solution is, in the previous solution, whenever enough data for one of the streams was available, then we were informing the CPU. The CPU was figuring out which stream is the one which is available, and based on that data, the CPU was programming the destination address for that stream in the DRAM memory into the DMA. Now what has changed? The thing which has changed is the, D the XI DMA, the XI multi-channel DMA here, will look at the destination information provided by the scheduler to the DMA and based on this destination information and the descriptor that it reads from the DRAM memory it will figure out itself what is the destination address to which it should copy the data. See, here the CPU is not doing anything anymore. The CPU doesn't need to program the XR DMA anymore for each of the transfers. All the CPU needs to do is to create these descriptors in the beginning of system operation. Basically, our driver needs to allocate memories for each of the streams and then based on the addresses that it has obtained from memory allocation, it can create proper descriptors for the DMA. And the DMA at the time of transfer reads these descriptors and figures out what's the destination address to which it should copy the data. We see here the interrupt line from the multi-channel DMA to the CPU. Even this interrupt line is no more really needed. Basically, the CPU in this scenario can completely sit aside and only time to time check the pointers inside the DMA to see what is the progress happening with copying data into the DRAM memory and if data is ready in the DRAM memory to be processed further. Here I am showing the sequence of transactions in more detail. On our CPU, we are running Linux. Inside the Linux, we have our Linux kernel level driver for multi-channel AXA DMA. The first thing which will happen is our Linux kernel level driver will allocate memories for each of the streams based on the memory allocation that it has done and configuration of the user, of course, it allocates another piece of memory for descriptors and then defines the descriptors and puts the descriptors there. It then gives the addresses for these descriptors to Axon Multi-Channel DMA. Here is the Vivado design that we have created for our example of using Axon Multi-Channel DMA in S2MM mode. Basically in this example, we have 16 sources of data, 16 XR stream masters. They are sending data to our multi-channel scheduler. Our multi-channel scheduler is connected to XR multi-channel DMA. The XR multi-channel DMA is then connected to HP0 port of our PS. Here is the Vivado design itself. We have our multi-channel scheduler IP. The multi-channel scheduler IP is very flexible. For each of the XI streams that you have here, you can have a different width and also a different size for the FIFO. The number of XI stream interfaces that we have here can be configured with the parameter that we have here. So I can set the number of XI string to any number from 1 to 16. It should be noted that each of these streams can be running in its own clock domain. The output of the scheduler is connected to the multi-channel DMA. And from there, we have a connection to the HP0 port. Now, our multi-channel DMA also contains the scatter gather port. The scatter gather port is also connected to the HP0 port. We create a kernel level driver for the MC, XI MC DMA. Our kernel level driver allocates memory for descriptors and creates them. It configures and starts the DMA engine. 
it allocates memory for the buffers in which we should store the stream data. Then it provides an MMAP interface to the user level application so that the user level application can access this data. The driver provides IO controls to the user. The user can use the IO controls to see what's the progress with transferring of a specific XI stream data to reset the DMA, to get a status from DMA, and tasks similar to these. Here is a very simplified representation of the connections of our MCDMA kernel level driver. Our MCDMA kernel level driver allocates the buffers for each of the streams. It allocates the buffer for descriptors. It fills up the buffer for descriptors with proper descriptor data. It is in contact with our user level application through MMAP and IO controls. In the third part of the package, we study using XI multi-channel DMA for transferring data of multiple streams from the DRAM memory to basically XI stream slaves that we have on the PL. Here is a simplified block diagram of the idea. Actually, if you look at this part, it's very similar to transferring data from the PL to the PS. Previously, uh, the MCDMA was copying the data to the DRAM memory. This time it's reading the data from the DRAM memory. The descriptor structure is kind of the same. So it reads the data of the streams from their respective buffers in the DRAM memory and passes the stream data to a module that we have created and we call it multi-channel demultiplexer. The multi-channel demultiplexer looks at the destination field of the incoming stream data and based on the destination passes the stream to the proper destination. For this part, we have also created an example Vivado design. Here in the example Vivado design, we have the multi-channel DMA DMUX block. We create a complete software for our design. The software contains kernel level driver for XI MCDMA in MM2S mode. The driver performs all of the tasks that we need to do so that we can transfer data from DRAM memory to streams. It allocates, defines the descriptors, allocates the memory, provides MMAP IO control interfaces and other required tasks. And then we have a user level application that we use as an example to show how this entire hardware is working under Linux. This was the introduction to our package. Now we start by looking at the folder structure for the first part of the package and looking at the RTL for different parts of the design and looking at the source code for the kernel level drivers and user level application.